Hello, my name is Ben PM. Welcome to the Nightbreed Metal Radio Top 25 Metal Albums of 2023. It's been a fantastic year for metal and I want to talk it up and spruce it and just have a bit of a chat with you about the stuff I've been digging. So let's get into it. I'll start with uh, EP. So the Harvest Trail, a Perth band, put out an EP spree this year, um, which is killer. If you haven't checked these guys out, it's real uh, techy, melodic, death metal um, and they're so good to watch live, like really tight, really locked in, such a, a wicked sound. And this EP, I think, um, captures that really well. Uh, it's really, the way it's mixed and everything is cool. This is a great release. Another EP that I got this year was, um, Necro Filth and Steel Bearing Hand. Uh, I really like Steel Bearing Hand. Um, they're an American, uh, like thrashy, old school, thrash black kind of band, um, and the killer i really dig them and they put out this release uh where they both did covers of um kiss songs uh so necrofilth did black diamond and still bearing hand did love gun and while they you know they crusty it up a bit um make it their own a bit but it's also very respectful you know like it sounds like the original um because they love kiss i guess and so do i like i think it's really cool and um the artwork, I mean, it's worth it for that alone. Some great live releases this year. Um, Psy put out this uh, DVD, CD pack, uh, Live, The Eastern Forces of Evil 2022. Um, Psy have such a crazy, amazing black metal sound. Um, if you haven't listened to them, it's like nothing else, you know? Like, it's real eclectic and interesting, and they've got this cool kind of 60s thing going on. It's amazing, and then and it was cool to watch it on stage with all the theatrics and everything attached to it. It's such a great um, release, this one. Uh, Mayhem put out another live release, one of many. Um, this one is Demonic Rights, and I this is my favourite era of Mayhem. I think um, I, like I've seen them live every time they've come here. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, but the last time they were here, which is what this is recorded from, um, in part. It was the best. It was the best time I'd seen them. You know, they had a really good mix of um, songs from their different eras. Like they didn't just stick to the past or just play the new stuff. Like they got they played stuff from Grand Declaration and all that. Like it, it, I really dug that mixing it up like that. And they sort of had semi like set changes and costume changes a little bit with it. It was cool. Like they just, it looked fun. It was really rocky, black metal fun. Like I dug I dig this era a lot. And this recording is um, you know captures that. I know they're much maligned, but I still like Cradle of Filth. I think they're great. Um, and this Trouble and Their Double Lives is a, a live recording as well. And again, it's um, it's cool to hear like a, a mix, a different set list of the songs slightly differently. Like, I'm, for all I know, this is overdubbed to hell. I wouldn't have a clue, but it, uh, when I put it on, it sounds great. And it's a good mix of songs. Um, yeah. I know people hate them, but I love them. Now, on to my top 25. Obviously, everyone's got a bloody opinion. You know, no, no one's is more important than anyone else's, but I just wanted to spruik this stuff and talk about it because I thought it'd be fun. Um, and, you know, I enjoy some of the other people doing this sort of thing as well. Uh, so, a quick shout out to a, uh, an Instagram channel called Power Metal Albums something something. I can't remember the whole title, but um, if you look that up, this guy puts up uh out like covers and little descriptions of new releases throughout the year and i've come across so many things that i haven't really seen anywhere else through this guy like there's he, there's a lot it's very comprehensive so you know it's you have to it's a bit like homework sometimes but part of me wants to do that like check out new things um and so some of the releases that i really dug this year that are in this list uh i I found out about because of Power Metal Albums. So thanks, man. Thanks for doing that thing and keeping me informed. I, I like it. So anyway, number 25, Anx Skrieg. Anx Skrieg is um, different, man. Like, <laughs> I've, uh, something about this really grabbed me straight away, about their sound. Um, they do, like, an excellent old-school black metal thing, but they aren't afraid to experiment with other feels and genres at all. Um, it's like there's rap on this album you know what i mean but weirdly it never feels too jarring the way the songs are written and the way they sort of flow um the the change in genre just fits like it's i can sort of hear it and it's catchy as hell too like um real catchy black metal riffs um 
I've translated some of the lyrics from the Dutch and they seem quite metal, but perhaps, perhaps about other things. Um, you know, like there's a song that's got something to do with AI, that sort of thing. Um, and again, you know, that's just a bonus. It's an aside, but, um, the way it sounds is the best thing. <laughs> it's really rocky, you know what I mean? And visually it's these two guys, they're a two piece. Um, and that's what they look like. And that's what they always look like. Um, it's a killer release. I honestly, uh, oh yeah, that's right. It's a nice purple one. Yeah, I kind of love the ballsiness of putting a rap, it was a rap into a proper old school black metal song. Like it's, yeah, but it's it's good too. Like it's not just jokey and silly. It's really solid. Number twenty four, Cattle Decapitation, Terror Sight. Uh, this is very much a sequel to 2019's uh, Death Atlas, but with less of the narration and stuff in between. Um, I accidentally put this on the the wrong speed one day, and the vocals fell off, but the groove of the thing was still there and locked in and then when you hit the button and speed it up it's like the drums almost sound like they're too fast but that's just how david mcgraw drums like it's, it's just it's techy and fast with all the stops and grabs and things going on um but they managed to still have a great groove and and like cool little breakdowny sort of bits and really memorable songs as well um travis ryan has a great range too like he sings those death metal vocals you know, but he also does these like reverby, clean, high notes, which is the catchiness of it. You know what I mean? I got this like fleshy color on the back. Hey. Yeah, not not that far removed from um, Death Atlas, but I think just as strong. It's a really good album. Number twenty three, Cannibal Corpse, Chaos Horrific. Um, the crunchy low bass that kicks off this album gives it some, this nice big fat start. You know, it's kind of groovy. It's got this big fat book actually. Lots of uh, cool. Like comic booky sort of images in here. I really like. I really like this package. You know? um, it's all very gory and everything, obviously. Um, so yeah, uh, I don't like this one as much as um, Violence Unimagined. I think there was something about that album uh, which was a bit more old school Cannibal Corpse, maybe. Um, but this is still really good. You know, um, it's got the slow, menacing groove of Blood Blind. Um, you know, I can imagine festival crowds chanting, Subjugate, you know, that kind of thing. That's got that big kind of sound. Um, there's some different guitar sounds on here, like, um, harmonized guitars and techy dissident kind of guitars and stuff, which, like, it's cool. They sound good, but it doesn't, I don't know, it, it doesn't quite sit as well as some of their other the guitars on their other albums do <laughs> but um i still really dig it and it's a great album that's why it's on the list because i listen to it a lot um yeah like <laughs> compared to so many other things on this list this probably has is going to sell bazillions just because it's got cannibal corpse on the front of it you know what i mean but um saying that it's really solid as well and i've bought all their albums and i've never been massively disappointed you know what i mean um they know what they're doing it's good Number 22, Expired Ominous. Um, this is a, a solo project with some help from other people uh, from a guy in Canada. Um, I really, I really, really dig it. Um, he's got uh, like a bit of a narrative going on. Um, the music is really Voivod-esque, you know. Um, not so similar that it sounds exactly like Voivod, but it's, it's a bit definitely an obvious um, inspiration. And there's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> you know. Um, Night Traveler starts with a really fat bass as well. And then you can hear that fat bass throughout. Uh, it's not necessarily louder in the mix or anything, but the way it's mixed, it just, it stands out. Like you can actually hear it, which I, you know, I like hearing the bass. I want to hear what that bass is doing, you know. Um, songs like The Alchemist slow it down a bit as well. And you get this sad, weird kind of groove, groove and like a cool synth sound, which kind of gives it this early 90s sort of feel. Um, it's really, really killer, you know, um, the guy painted the cover as well, um, and he's got, like, uh, the characters have costumes, did you check out the, uh, the music videos, there's a couple of music videos, um, with the costumes and everything, and it's so cool, really, like, it's DIY, you know, it's somebody putting out their own stuff, and I think it's fantastic, like, I just, um, it, it doesn't quite have the slick, louder, boosted polish, which I think would help. Um, you know, if I had some more money behind it or whatever, just like anything like this, including my stuff. But, um, I really like the mix of everything within it. 
um, like it sounds like the bands in the room rather than having that clinically clean digital solo project things going on. This has got that warm, guitar-y, moshy, riffage. Um, it's mostly clean singing with that kind of yelly, chanty thing going on. Um, yeah, I just big recommend. It's um, such a cool, cool theme and idea and such a killer sound. Number 21... KK's Priest, Sinner Rides Again. Um, so it's it's they've got that heavy metal pace, of course, and the rock and metal riffs. And you got Ripper Rowan, of course. There he is, Ripper Rowan. His vocals are... He's got the lungs, you know. He's got the big heavy metal vocals going on. And there's like a bed of like synthy choirs and stuff. Really, really lush production. It's, you know, I mean, look at it. <laughs> this is like big budget metal, you know what I mean? I love it, man. Um, there's a bit of a narration thing going on as well. Um, the intro to the Keeper of the Graves kind of sounds like it came straight out of Lord of the Rings, you know. Um, the whole thing has a, like a whiff of Warhammer nerd about it, which I'm, I'm really into. I think that's cool, you know. It's really fun. This is, that's what this sort of metal is, is for, you know what I mean? I really love it. Uh, yeah, I'm not always a fan of like slicker, more polished metal but i think for this kind of thing it helps so you know anything like maiden that bigger sort of epic fantasy sound the bigger and this it sounds the better it is you know what i mean um it's it's catchy as as well catchy awesome riffs i just it's just a really solid metal album <sighs> annoyingly number 20 is one of two things that still haven't come in the mail yet that i have bought because i like having the physical thing but I stream music as well, and that's what I've been doing for this one. Uh, Nocturnal Breed, number 20, Carry the Beast. Uh, the first and uh, title track starts with a bit of a Terminator, Pink Floyd synth vibe going on with reverby guitars all over it. Um, and there's some narration style bits in this one too, on like Atomic Cruiser and uh, Trench Fever. It's got this War of the, World, War of the Worlds, Alice in Chains-y guitar sound thing with big synth. Um, and then when the guitar's kicking, it's like thrashy, black thrash, you know, wailing guitars, double kicks, all this, um, and the high, all that. It's just killer, you know what I mean? Uh, Knights of Denim is a song that could, could have been a short, sharp, catchy three minutes, but it goes for about nine minutes, it's, and that's good. Like, that's what we want. <laughs> that's what I want out of this band. Um, I really, really like it. It's like thrashy and metal and there's lots of guitar solos um it's killer man uh, they, oh yeah they cover phil oaks uh, i ain't marching no more and it feels like motorhead it's really really great number 19 brujeria esto s uh more use out of google translation for this one um the last album uh po poco aztian i'm not i'm totally fucking up all the pronunciation it came out in 2016 the album was okay, but it didn't really grab me like their other ones did. But this, this is more like what I want to hear, you know. Um, it's loud and like punchy and fast and catchy um, and angry, <laughs> you know. It's cool. Uh, like the Bruja and Cambronada has these really fast blasts. Um, there's these cool spoken parts in um, like particularly in that GAK. G-A-E-K and I don't know what's being said but it's being said with lots of character um, this is good on headphones too there's some cool hard pans going on um, that, and it kind of feels like a proper surround mix the drums sound really 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 crazy all these syncopated double kick parts and stuff um, yeah they, again this is another album that kind of feels like has a bit of a narrative um, possibly like possibly a satirical one you know like because it starts with this like news commentary sounding bit and yeah and oh yeah the, um the cover of jj kale the eric clapton cocaine <laughs> cocaine it's it's amazing man. like <laughs> come on this is yeah number 18 marduk memento mori uh, this is their 15th album 15 albums um the drums are like just constant in this and sometimes they're so insanely fast you know like it's part of it mate like you hear it you're like is this is this programmed but then you watch the videos like no no he's just a madman <laughs> you know um it's really really good uh shovel beats shovel beat scepter sounds a bit like an alternative to uh 
paper, scissors, rock. That, that's got a bit of a slower groove, almost. So it does show that Simon can play, you know, in different modes. He's not just on a one mode full speed ahead guy. But mostly that's what it is. <laughs> you know, it's just like fast and blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's, yeah, the crunchy guitars, you know, there's the, the witchy black metal vocals. It has all that old school black metal stuff like that, black metal hiss going on with just these insanely new sounding drums. It's crazy. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's almost too much, but I really like it. Um, some of the songs have these cool cinematic horns going on as well. Um, like near the end of uh, Red Tree of Blood. Um, yeah, it all just feels really big. Boom, boom, you know, it's, it's good. Number 17, Leather Bitch, Shattered Vanity. This is a band out of Portland, Oregon. Um, and it's all just like 80s speed metal worship, man. Uh, the great riffs and solos. Um, cool call and response um, chorus parts and that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> great, great artwork. Uh, it's just... Yeah, it's almost like... I don't know. Is it, is it homage or is it... I don't know what the word is when you basically just like... Could have come out in the era they emulating you know what i mean it's it's bit like i like it for that it's very cool um the title track shannon vanity's got like vanity like it's i don't know it's real catchy the order of the songs is good too like the better tracks are like the last couple of tracks you know what i mean so it's like 40 minutes of solid heavy fun heavy metal this one in particular i've i've kind of just left in the cd player and played again and again like it's a it's so fun all the way through really cool sound number 16 cadaver the age of the offended more cds i'm telling you the the record price is going up is killing me but i'm still getting them but you know at least you can still get cds and sometimes i don't want to get up you know five times during one album i just want to put it on and sit down you know um anyway cadaver the age of the offended number 16 this is weird man <laughs> like look at the teeth on that thing it's so strange, like, but it's amazing as well, you know, like, they're really doing something different here. Um, so, it's, it starts, the first song, Sycophant Swing, it starts with this, like, brr, 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 like a sleazy trumpet and this ominous guitar sound, you know, and then that, the ominous guitar sound, it's like this real reverby, really off, like, brr, kind of sound. And that doesn't stop for the whole album. It's just in the background there, kind of adding little mood and things to different things happening elsewhere. Because there's like these solid kind of carcassy-ish riffs, you know. Some of them feel a bit black metal even as well, um, like The Sick of the Better, uh, that kind of thing. But that's here. And then over here, there's this guitar going... You know, like, I know... <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it's incredible. Like the, how it, it works, it's very, very cool. There's lots going on, um, but it's still catchy and heavy as well. The Age of the Offended riff is a really cool, slidey riff. You know, um, the Scum of the Earth has that punchy chorus. You are that guy. You know, like it's killer, man. It's really, really good stuff. There's some sludgy, slower stuff as well, like the Drowning Man um, has all these like bendy, spidery riffs. It's good, but then, yeah, then you got Deadly Metal, which just has this really catchy, normalish chorus, but then when it goes into the crazy guitar solos and little dissonant bits and all that, it's, it's cool. Like, I mean, yeah. Look at that cover, too. It's kind of insane. That's kind of sick. I mean, let me do that. Yeah, check that out. It's madness, right? Anyway. Such a killer album. Um, I've, I've got the one before this, too, and it's good, but... I'll go straight to this if you haven't heard them before. It's killer. All right, number 15. Uh, Imperial Crystalline Entombment Ice with uh, Ancient Glacial Resurgence. This is a US band um, that uh, play cold black metal, obviously. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> um, it's The production is slicker than the earlier release. Not too much, but a little bit. It's kind of got that... Um, like that early 2000s new black metal sort of sound, like like Satyricon and Mayhem around that time, uh, Thorns, that kind of feel, where like it's still heavy and intense, but it's also a bit more triggered and slick. Um, 
that's the kind of sound this has and I, I like it for it you know what I mean that it's so fast like it's insanely fast there are hooky melodies but the songs never stay in the same place for too long they're always moving on to the next riff or the next bit um, there's plenty of dissonant guitar squeals and that sort of stuff and it slows down sometimes for these epic mournful slower bits but mostly it's like <laughs> just <laughs> the intense metal blasts of snow and ice in your face um, it's cool so yeah, like a 2004 songs, Astral Frosting Vacation, that started with We Are Fucking Ice, right? And then the first track on this, which is the release, the only release since then, We Are Still Fucking Ice, and I love that. Number 14, Enslaved, Heimdall. Um, Enslaved haven't drastically changed their sound for a while now, since they did the big shift, of, you know, around... A retour and you know that sort of era um but i really dig that sound like there's it's huge it's so epic i mean look at this thing look at that it's like a big ocean scape and then we got some like foresty looking shit on the back with the lyrics that i really really dig this band um it's all so epic you know um I don't even really know how to classify it because it's still it's still like they come from black metal obviously you know what I mean like they're still doing black metal things but um there's lots of harmonized clean vocal parts and almost like proggy doomy sort of stuff going on as well you know um there's lots of long sections of building and mood and all that sort of stuff so it's definitely not for everyone um but I like it like Congelia. It starts with this chuggy intro that just keeps slowly building and building and building for about three minutes before kind of letting loose, but still with this continual, you know, like in the background, chug, chug, chugging along. Um, so yeah, if you only like, you know, crusty, fast black metal, then this isn't for you. But um, I really dig it. And I think what they're doing, no one else is doing it. You know what I mean? It's their sound. Number 13. Cruel Force, Dawn of the Axe. Um, this is Speed Thrash, just totally old school, you know, um, traditional heavy metal thrashy stuff. Um, there's lots of call out vocal syncopation stuff, you know. Um, it's just super catchy though, you know, <laughs> like really like, you know, that kind of thing. Across the Sticks is my favorite one. It's got this almost Egyptian kind of thing going on. And it's slightly slower, moshy kind of intro. And then it goes back into the boop, 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 you know, the snare chugging along. Um, there's some cool little one beat stops. And there's some cool big rock slow down outros like dun, 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 all that. You know, it's just, it's just a really solid old school sounding metal release. I, I love it. Cool force. Okay, number 12, Zustan Null, Beyond the Limit of Sanity. I really like the cover. It's kind of odd. Um, so this is a great black metal release. Um, it starts as just like a blasty black metal first, you know, and then it sort of breaks down into this like moshy, rocky sort of thing. And then it goes somewhere else and then it goes somewhere else. It's really like real moving all over the shop. It's still catchy and still has a, has a con constant sound. Like the when they get into that double kick groove, they can kind of feel that they're locked into that and that's cool. But they play around with it as well and try different things. Um, there's lots of cool fat bass bits in this one as well. Lots of tremolo picked chords. Um, again, it has that sort of newer-ish black metal sound, I guess. And when I say newer, I mean like, you know, from around 24 years ago. <laughs> um, that kind of sound, yeah. Uh, I dig it. I think they're doing interesting stuff. And I'm, I'm really keen to hear what they sound like you know, with a little bit more production budget behind it. Um, but saying that, it's still really great. It's a cool sound. Back sack sack sar. Um, Simon from Explosive Action got me onto this one, so thank you very much, Simon. I hadn't heard of this until you spoke about it and sold it. Um, watching your videos is expensive. Uh, the production of this is great. It's got this real pingy snare, loud, crusty guitars. Um, they play with hard panning a lot as well. Um, and it kind of kind of fills the room a bit. Um, it's like growly, grumpy black metal vox, but also some like deep oh, Satan kind of stuff going on. Um, 
the synth sound in it is just the right sound as well. Like the reverb and the hiss and the, like the cymbal hiss, all that. It's all just right. You know what I mean? But they're definitely uh, big, big fans of um, 90s black metal and they're good at doing it. <laughs> um, I really like it. There's faster blasts here as well. But I think they sound best when they're really just like mm, slowing it down, that doomy kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, back sack sack sass. Such a good release. Number 10, Cavell Attack and Ling. Uh, 2016's Nattisford was when I first started listening to Cavell Attack. Um, they go under Norwegian rock, and they are very rock. But I hear the elements of black metal and other things in here as well, you know? Um, I like how their songs are definitely structured for like a big rock arena, live 70s cheesy style of thing. You know what I mean? Like a song will build up and then like the, the you know, and then the keys will come in and then the guitar will come in. It's like you can imagine the band all getting up on stage and all getting their own separate little cheer squad and all, you know, like big dumb rock stuff. It, it's fun. And then it, you know, it'll build and build and build and build and then it'll stop. You know, like get into the riff kind of thing. It's real rocky, rock, rock, rock. But like, the thing that makes it not—I mean, I'll, I would like it even if it was just a rock album. You know what I mean? Like, like the new Rolling Stones album is killer. But the thing that makes this medley for me is um, the way it builds up. You know what I mean? Like they're not afraid to put in some like proper metal style blast beats and things to sort of when they're building up into some other big next rock section you know what I mean like the new Stones album as good as it is is not going to have double kick in it you know what I mean um it's really really cool and there is some still some tacky drum bits going on too little st cymbal stops and things like that and they're singing in Norwegian so more Google translating but um even though I don't know what they're saying that still doesn't stop the earworms getting in there man this is catchy like yeah, the, and the vocal too. The other thing that makes it a bit black metal is the vocals. When he's real screeching, it's it's a little bit like maybe the helicopters or the hives or something like that, but also a little bit like um, housed, that kind of hardcore, punky black metal sort of screech. Real like, ah, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just this like toe-tapping, catchy, rocky album. I really like it. Number nine, Natverd, I Helvetis Fracht. Uh, again, more Norwegian black metal. Uh, this is, it's real, it starts with like st snowy, stormy sound effects. And then we get into this cold black metal sound for the whole thing. It's just, it's really cool. Like, um, I like how it's all that blue, purpley sort of thing. And that's, that matches the sound really well, I think. Yeah. Check that out. Yeah. Um, it's all like really majestic and like big sweeping riffs and all this kind of stuff. It's slick-ish production, but it's not too slick. Like it still holds that hissy aura of cold black metal about it, you know? Um, it's real like doomy, rolling. Yeah, I, I really like it. There's even some like uh, acoustic picked out bits with like oh, wolves howling in the background. Come on. All right, number eight. Uh, is Judah Helvia. I've no idea how to say it. It's another Norwegian band. Um, this is great. It's so fast, right out of the gate, just bang, you know, really just look the I love that drawn artwork thing, it's cool. Um it's intense, you know. They've still got memorable catchy riffs and it's kinda of like speedy and chugging away. The, the riffs still stick, you know, like it's it's good stuff. Yeah, that looks like a zine or something. Very nice. There's lots of layered guitars and stuff like that, you know. And there's like the, you know, lots of that dissident weird riffs and bits like that. Sort of, um, the guitar playing sort of remind me of like Blasphemer era mayhem, that kind of like odd little dissident high up bits. All that, you know. Um, it's big and layered. There's lots of drum rolls. And it's real catchy. They can go doomy and slow black metal as well, like the title track, but um, mostly we can hear really, really fast drums and great black metal riffs. Number seven, Immortal, War Against All. Um, so obviously this is just Demon S on his own. Um, I think he still gets a little help. But uh, 
It's killer. Like, obviously, old school Immortal is, you know, the best. Look at that. Cold, icy, blue, black metal. Um, yeah, old school Immortal is the best, but I really like what Abath and Demon Az are doing on their own, so it's not the way, not the end of the world, you know, like, really good stuff. Really, oh, this is great, look at that. Yeah. Um, so, like, this probably sounds a little more like immortal than Northern Chaos Gods did. I really liked Northern Chaos Gods. They had that fast kind of black metal thing going on. Um, but the production and the guitar sound and the pace in particular are different on this one. This is more like at the heart of winter immortal kind of era, I guess. Maybe even a bit slower. There's plenty of double kicks and fills and stuff, but it has that slower, moshy kind of pace going on. Some really cool bass parts. Um, yeah, it's, it's really good. And, um, as much as I'd prefer to be talking about some band you've never heard of, again, like, <laughs> Immortal are amazing and this is a great album. Number six is apparently in the mail but hasn't made it all the way to Australia yet. Um, Three Season and Mist, who are generally pretty good with that kind of thing. Anyway, the new Pro Fanatica Crux Simplex is my number six album because I've still been streaming it anyway. Uh, it's muddy, sluggish, black metal, weird riffs. Uh, listening to this is like crawling through like a dirty sewer, you know, the vocals get really guttural, there's blast beats but they're never like insanely fast, it's all going to go through that thick pro fanatica sieve, it feels slower than Rotting Incarnation of God, the 2019 release, but it still has that grimy pro fanatica -ness. yeah, it's great, I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting the actual record and being able to put it on and listen to it properly. Number five, Mork, Dippet, more old, cold black metal from Norway. I really love that cover as well, look at that. So ominous. Um, there he is, the man himself, Thomas. Uh, this is really cool. It's like, it's the, it's the slower, moodier black metal sound again, with ads. Um, like, uh, I'm gonna have to read this, four foot of Colden. It's got that slower media feel, but the production still has that like piercing guitar sound coming through. Like it's still black metal. There's still that black metal guitar crunch, just bed under everything, you know. On uh, Hoi Muir, <laughs> uh, Erlen Helvik from, um, who was in Cavell Attack, uh, has had some like high piercing vocals on that one. And that starts with just drums and like 20 black metal picked out chords. It's just like raining down in this three, four swing. It's a cool, wishy, washy, swingy black metal sound, you know? Uh, Bort Gang is my favorite track. It sounds a bit like if Burzum covered like a newer enslaved song or something. It's got that dark emotional thing going on, but it's also that cool, crusty black metal sound. And I, when I say crusty, I don't mean unlistenable. It's, it just, it has a bit of texture to it, you know? It's got that sh little washy thing in there, which it makes it sound so good, you know? Um, yeah, this is, it's all that slow black metal, this is great. When I say slow as well, I don't mean that it's like, you know, proper slow doom, like, sun or something. It's just slower than the fast-paced craziness of Marduk or something like that, you know? It's still pretty fast. Alright, number four, Obituary, Dying of Everything. Uh, some of the songs on this are honestly some of Obituary's best, I think. There's something about the guitar sound. And look at that cover as well. I mean, that's the cover of the year, I'd say. Look at that. Um, such cool color choices and design. Just amazing. Again, it's got a whiff of Warhammer about it. Um, it's just so cool that... A band I was listening to when I was, you know, 12, 13, it's still putting out some of their best stuff. Like, if I went back in time and told myself, I oh, guess what, when you're in your 40s, you'll be buying a new obituary album and it's one of their best, I'd be like, fuck off. <laughs> you know, but no, it's true. I really, really, really love this, man. Uh, so, it's just got that guitar sound, like that crunch and the, the mix of the vocal, kind of where it sits and the that drums the, and the catchy, catchy old school riffs. The main riff of the wrong time just gets stuck in my head and like barely alive, you know? The intro to War had all these, has all these battle sound effects and thick guitars and then you got John Tardy, I'll take you to war, you know, like so identifiable, like, boy, yeah, this is a picture, you know? 
It's killer. I'm so pumped that they're coming back to town um, so I get to see them again playing this newer stuff because I love it. It's such a good release. Number three, Venomous Concept, the good ship Lollipop. I have to thank my friend Daniel for getting me onto this band um, because like I'd heard of them but I'd never really properly listened to them before. And then um, he got me onto it with this very excellent album. I love this. this and I've gone back and bought most of the back catalogue. I think I've got one split left to get. Um, and I like it all. They really are something. But this is like the best one. <laughs> um, the, the track Fractured, that's the, that's the main thing. It's got a real killing joke thing going on. Um, and Shane Embry's clean vocals are so good. Like, I love it. And, you know, beautifully fractured, one and all, one slip and you will fall. That's so, like, perfect, you know, just really good, solid, dark, punchy songs, you know. Um, but it's not all like that, though. Like, the tracks like Timeline really kick. they got that kind of punky, heavy-hitting sound. I've added this whole album to my uh, skate mix that I take down to the skate park because it's got that, every song's got a bit of that going on, like a bit of like, yeah, let's go, you know. Um, voices like hey 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 you know um, Kevin Sharp's vocals almost have a bit of a Mike Patton thing going on in some of these songs um, like his the, the deeper clean sort of sounding stuff um, yeah Embry funded this uh, the recording of this and thank goodness he did because it's honestly their best it really is I love this and thank you very much Dan for getting me onto it number two Catatonia's 12th studio album Sky void of stars it's yeah this is really something <laughs> um catatonia have you know never sounded better i like the earlier growly stuff you know it's good but this slick doomy gothy prog rock thing that they've been doing for quite a long time now is i'm more about this this is i really really like it um oh look at that we've got a poster i can't open it because it's this big huge fuck off thing here we go Ah, okay. Look at that. There you go. Put that on the wall. We got very, very big. Don't need the glasses for this one. <laughs> I can read that one. Just the hooks on these songs are really, really, really strong. You know, they but they still have that like unusual catatonia song structure where it kind of never quite goes where you think it's going to go. I mean, it maybe after you listen to them for a while, it does, but um, it's. I guess, like, they're almost pop hooks, but they're doing something different with it, you know? Um, and, yeah, uh, Jonas, Jonas ranks, ranks the, uh, the, the singer, the vocalist. He has a really unique way of phrasing. And the lyrics always have, feel like, if you read them out loud, they wouldn't necessarily have an obvious rhythm. Like this one, check this out. This is from Atrium. We sing to the night, abolishing the promise. Our constellation is so far from reach. Believe it or not, when that's sung, that lyric is so catchy, <laughs> you know, like it's pretty wordy and like it's saying a lot, it's good poetry, but it doesn't have that obvious like poppy hook thing in it. But when you hear him singing it, it absolutely does have that, you know, it's really clever. I really like it. Um, if you've never ca checked out Catatonia, this is honestly a really good place to start. This is their one of their best, I think. Um, again, another band that's been going for so long and is still very strong and putting out their best stuff. It's exciting. Okay, last but not least, Tark et Hav Av Av Stand. This is their eighth full length album. It's four very long songs. Um, I like this kind of weird photo thing here. This, this, Tark are a great band, man. Like they do, they balance the mix of like old school, you know, let's do, old school black metal thing do it properly with new ideas you know um i mean they got a one of their songs not on this album has a bloody banjo solo on it you know but it still has that traditional black metal sound um it's that black metal sound you can swim in you know you're just like whoosh. there's strong riffs and interesting changes and segues and that kind of stuff but they still have that proper wash and hiss of cymbals and black metal guitar noise the vocals are really great but they're also i think purposefully a little buried they're sort of just part of the atmospheric sound um yeah this is another one that's that's been on repeat a lot uh so that's why it's my number one i really dig tuck i think they're 
um, yeah, one of the more interesting black metal bands out there because they keep that cool sound but do something different with it. Um, yeah, it's such good stuff. Now in the background while you've been listening to me babble on is uh, my stuff. I'm going to spruik my shit. Here we go. Caligari 100. This is a black metal score by Demon Sin. A name, one of the names I go under for my heavy metal uh, uh, horror based thing. Um, this pack has the DVD with the Caligari 100, the black metal score to the um, cabinet of Dr. Caligari. And it's got the soundtrack there. And it's got the little booklet and stuff. And um, that's what I've been listening to in the background because there's no vocals. So <laughs> it's a pretty good pick for the background of my video. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope that 2024 brings, you know, more excellent metal to our ears. And um, if you dig what you see, there is an audio version of this on the Nightbreed Metal Radio podcast, which is streaming everywhere and there's links below. And um, also, I generally have new interviews up every week. Uh, the last couple of weeks I haven't, but I've got a big bank of stuff, which will be out surely and muck around with formats and things so we'll see but you will see the interviews and they'll be excellent uh and again thank you very much for watching and i hope you all have a lovely break and piss off your neighbors and crank up some metal all right very good thank you very much